All right, so here we are going to use our plot diagram, which is a tool um, that we can also use to determine our theme and our central idea. So when you watch the video on Tuesday from Ms. Elmore about how to determine a theme, there was a slide about 10 minutes in, maybe eight or nine minutes in, that had three boxes. And on that three boxes, it had the word conflict, then there was the word resolution. And lastly, you had theme. Now immediately when you saw these two words, you should have connected, and if you haven't, now you're gonna do that, right? You're gonna connect that to your plot diagram. So if I were you, I would write these notes in my textbook um, on page, I think it's 25, hold on. Yes, on page 25, um, where we have the definition of theme and we also have the definition of infer. So what I would do is I would write my plot diagram and notice that the word conflict is found in a plot diagram and the word resolution is found in a plot diagram. So if I already plot out these two, uh, these two particular points it, using a plot diagram, then I must be able to use that to determine my theme. Let's see. So in your exposition, your exposition always includes three things. The first thing it always includes are the who, which are our characters. It always includes the where um, and the when, which would be our setting. And then lastly, the specific plot detail, it must always include, you guessed it, conflict. But conflict is not explicitly stated in our exposition. We just know, because we are scholar detectives, that we know that when we see the word exposition, these are the three things we must also consider. Next, we have conflict stated somewhere else in our climax. Not only is climax, um, some people would define climax as where the story gets interesting. I don't like to use that um, definition because uh, I would find that what's interesting to me might not be interesting to you. And some students like to say nothing is interesting so that keeps them from having to ever find the climax. So what I teach my students is that climax always is where the conflict is resolved. One important thing to note here is not that re a conflict being resolved is not always a positive outcome. So for example, when we uh, read Rogue Wave, the climax uh, was found in paragraph 62. And in that paragraph, the initial conflict of Scoot being trapped inside the boat after the Rogue Wave capsizes it, she is released from the boat. She's not on safe ground. She's not completely out of danger, but the conflict had been resolved. She's no longer trapped inside the boat. However, the climax could have been different in that she dies inside of the capt, uh, the captured, or inside the, the, and being held captive inside the boat. And the boat still releases her, but she no longer is living. Has the conflict been resolved? It has because she's no longer in that battle. She's no longer fighting because she's literally dead, right? If that was what happened in the story. So although that conflict, we would probably guess that that resolution would not be positive, the, the outcome of that conflict. But I need us to remember that just because something is solved does not mean it's a positive outcome, okay? And we know that because we've just read The Flight of Icarus and there definitely is not a positive outcome uh, for, ne for neither character, right? So I say all that to say this. Conflict is found here in our exposition, but it is also found in our climax. That lets me know right now, I should be starting to formulate um, an idea, right? A, a formula that when I go to determine my central idea and my theme, I need to add these two things together. So I'm just going to put a little plus sign. You use your exposition plus your climax, but then look, we had the word resolution here. Resolution is found at the end of our plot diagram. That's where the story is finalized that there are no other conflicts in that particular plot 
that need to be completed. So the story has finished. So that lets me know that my exposition plus my climax plus my resolution is going to equal my theme. Let's write that down. Exposition plus climax plus resolution equals central idea or main idea. And from that, I'm going to use what is stated on page 25. We underline two definitions. We underline the definition of theme, and we're also, we had already underlined the definition infer, which means make a logical guess. So once I have determined the central idea of a text, I infer in order to formulate my theme. I must have that skill to uh, formulate my theme. We all make logical guesses all the time. It's not a new skill that we're learning just this year, okay? So we're gonna take all of that and let's really apply it to the flight of Icarus. So I'm going to erase all of my shenanigans here um, and then let's test out and see if what Miss Watts has said is in fact factual. So I have my plot diagram set out. I did my rising action and falling action as well. I'm not going to uh, require you guys to do that and I'm not going to go over all of that today in this lesson because really in order to determine our theme and our central idea, all I need to know is my exposition, I need to know my climax, and I need to know my resolution. All right. So, if I were coming up with an exposition for um, The Flight of Icarus, this is what I would say. My characters, as you guys know, I call them Daddy D. I love to, uh, when I'm taking notes, just to um, use abbreviations so that I don't have to write as much because I need to use all of that skill and I'm trying to save up my energy for real analysis, evaluation, and creation. So, I don't need to create this. I'm just jotting some stuff down. So D there would be the dad, the eldest, and I would be Icarus. D and I are trapped, those are my characters, are trapped, or maybe even we could use the word imprisoned, on an island, that's our setting, right? Because King Minos was not pumped up about uh, Icarus, I mean, D eldest not making a, uh, escape proof labyrinth right and Icarus comes to try to help his father but then they both get trapped he tries to help his father escape from the high tower um, and they're on this island we know an island has its own conflict because it is a body of land surrounded by water and King Minos is on high alert of the or on the water so H2O there, I'm just going to use that for water. That's my exposition. Do we have characters? Check. Do we have the um, setting? Check. Do we have the, the conflict? Yes, the conflict is connected to the setting. It's a piece of land surrounded by water, and the conflict is King Minos is watching everything come and go off of that island, and so Dieldis and Icarus are trapped or in prison uh, because they cannot escape by water. The only logical escape. Then your climax. This story, story is much shorter. Um, Rogue Wave was 69 paragraphs, and The Flight of Icarus is only 9 paragraphs. So we could plot our rising action, but again, we're not going to use that because it's not part of our formula. But our climax can be found in paragraph, that uh, is a symbol for paragraph, number 7. Paragraph number seven, if I was going to summarize, I would say that Icarus and Dialdus successfully leave the island, but Icarus did not pay attention to his father's advice and he pummels to the sea. So remember, climax is where your conflict is resolved. The original conflict is that they're trapped on the island because of its water. It's resolved here because D and I escape not in the water, but escape um, by air. 
remember that Dieldis put together the wings, right? And they've uh, he's attached them to him and Icarus, and they have gone on this journey. So they've successfully uh, resolved that conflict. They have successfully left the island. They're no longer imprisoned. However, we know because we read the text, it's not going to have a positive um, outcome. Because um, in paragraph 6, paragraph 6, um, Dieldis tries to give his son some wisdom, some words of the wiser, and Icarus fails to adhere to that advice. And because he fails to adhere to that advice, he literally pummels or plummets to his death. And so we, we could have following action just for your personal reference. That's paragraph eight. And then paragraph nine is where our resolution comes. So if I were to summarize that, I would say that Dieldis and, and his ingenious and joyous creativity and ability uh, no longer uh, keeps him imprisoned. And that same spirit that he has is the spirit that he's given to his son. That Icarus is a lot like his dad in that he's very carefree. He's very um, go with the flow, right? And he, so much so that he failed to listen to advice from his father that literally uh, re related or ended in his demise or his death. Um, so the resolution here would be um, that Dieldis and Icarus are similar with their carefree spirits. However, Icarus's inability to recognize danger results in his death and it doesn't just impact Icarus Icarus's father is consumed with grief because he has lost his son the same son that at the very beginning of the text comes to rescue his father Icarus wasn't in put in a high tower only Deodis was once the king was upset about the labyrinth failing and it's Icarus who tries to come and save his father. And so his father is wrecked with grief because I'm sure he begins to realize that it is in my curiosity, in my creativity, in my um, inability to create really serious settings for my son that he possibly, that could be the reason he died. So our conflict, our conflict here is that D and I are trapped on an island and unable to escape from what? Uh, escape, excuse me, by water because the king is watching that, right? Our resolution, D and I escape but Icarus fails to um, take his father's wisdom and apply it to his situation. And so Icarus dies and Dieldis is muy sad. He's so sad. He's overcome with grief because his son is dead. Now, we've got our conflict check. We used our plot diagram for that. We have our resolution that we saw that our conflict is resolved, right? We, we had to know that they eventually escaped. And it's in that escaping that we found our resolution that Icarus dies and Dieldis is almost dead in real life because he is so grieved so now we've got to come up with a theme so let me back this up really this is our central idea our resolution is the main idea of a story we just summarized the entire text in this short brief um 
synopsis or summary of a story. That's our resolution. We must remember central ideas always, that means there are no exceptions, always have specific plot details. You cannot have a central idea without supporting it with textual evidence, okay? However, your theme, themes, and I'm going to start erasing some of this shenanigans. Themes, that's themes, right? Themes never have specific plot details. Why not? Because we have to use our skill of inference or infer. We have to use our skill of inference from our resolution. We're going to make a logical guess. And once we make that logical guess, that is going to give us a theme. So what I want you to do is to think for a few minutes, based on this um, resolution that we have, because remember that's our central idea, and we use our central ideas to determine our themes. How do we do that? We take the skill of inference, we make a logical guess, and make a generalization. Miss Elmore brought that up in her video. We make a generalization about these specific plot details and create a theme that does not use specific plot details. So take about 15 seconds and just think. Great. Perhaps you came up with a theme like this. Check yourself. Is it fair to say that the lesson or message that the author had Dieldis and Icarus to learn through this tragedy, um, we can take that same lesson and apply it to ourselves so that we won't have to experience that tragedy. I think that's a great um, reason for us to read this story. So if I were to formulate or create, that's the top of Bloom's taxonomy, if I was able to create a theme on this story, I would say that it is important to know or discern. Discern is when you can kind of infer uh, and read between the lines and make judgments. So it's important to know or discern when you should um, take life more seriously and when it is appropriate to be more carefree. It's important to know or discern when you should take life more seriously and when it is appropriate to be more carefree. Now, that's just me talking off the top of my head. Do I think that's a really great theme? No. Would I ever find that theme on an EOG? No. Would I ever find that assessment in, in our in-class assessments with all of these words? No. But I did this on purpose to show you that sometimes your first idea is not a bad idea, but it's not the best idea. So we can take this and revise it and come up with an even stronger universal idea. So I am just going to erase this so that I have more space. I'm going to leave the theme that I have uh, first created, right? That everything, um, even as experts um, in ELA and analysis of literature, my first one is not always my best one, okay? So I'm just modeling for you that it's okay to not be one and done. It's okay to revise, edit, and submit, all right? So let's look at this. I want you to take another 15 seconds 
and see if you can kind of come up with an even greater theme that is a universal lesson or message. Three, two, one. This is what I've come up with. Knowing how to be carefree or more serious in decisions can result in life or death. Knowing how to be carefree or more serious in life or in decisions can result in life or death. Is this the only thing that you can come up with? No. Could you find this and then see on an EOG where it's the same words but in a different um, context? Sure. Would you be able to decipher that and then say, this is what I came up with and I think letter B or letter D is the right answer? You should be able to do that because you're going to still use that inference and summary skills. So this is a lesson though. This is a lesson that we can learn from Icarus and Dialdis. That if Icarus would have known how to really apply when it was appropriate to be carefree, or when it was appropriate to be more serious and adhere to his father's direction, that result could have, could have saved his life. But because he didn't really know the difference, and I'm not gonna blame Icarus on this one, I'm totally blaming Daddy D on this. I don't think he set the tone for his son to really know the difference. But that's either here nor there, that's me evaluating and making a judgment on, on his parenting skills. Now the same could be true, if he knew Icarus knew to be more serious, he may in, uh, in fact still be alive if this was a real story. So I hope that looking at using a plot diagram, noticing that exposition, climax, and resolution are all very formulaic, just like math, that they all then equal the central idea. And once you get that central idea, you create a theme based on that without using specific plot details. And it's in that theme that you might come up with your first idea, might be a good idea, but you might need to revise and make it an even better idea. And I could go a step further and make this even greater and have another one. But as long as I have a universal uh, message or lesson that I can apply learning from the story that I read, I have successfully been able to determine a central idea and determine a theme. I hope this helps, um, and I guess we'll see when we assess.